Hey, what's up guys? Matt Sheffield with American Made Exotics here. Um, I wanted to do an update in the rat building. Um, just kind of show everybody how we breed our rodents. And we did something really cool with the water um, back a few months ago. And I really think that's worth sharing. It saves a ton of time. We don't ever stand and fill our waters up anymore. Um, if you take a look here, we have this system with the, the PEX lines on the ceiling. And we have a cutoff for every rack. And then we have the reverse osmosis line that goes to the tub and goes on a float valve. So every day when we come in, we flip the main line to the water and it'll auto fill all these buckets until that float valve goes up and it'll cut the water off as soon as the float valve goes up. Um, I guess similar to like the back of your toilet or something where the water will fill all the way until the float goes up and then it cuts the line off. Um, we got the idea from the saltwater aquariums we have. We put a system like this on a, a big trash can that was our mixing station for the salt. And these, these float valves we actually got from um, Bulk Reef Supply and Aquarium website and the reverse osmosis lines and all that too. And we just kind of incorporated something from another hobby into this one. And what's cool is it took maybe an hour filling all these buckets up with water. We used to use a hose and stuff. And uh, it just totally eliminates that. Every day we just fill it up and make sure everything's topped off. Now I've seen people bypass the bucket and have a water system similar to the PEX line on the ceiling, but they'll tie the, the rat right into this water line right here. And uh, that's a good option too. But my concern with that, my concern with that's always been, what if there's a chew? Or what if there's some kind of leak from a nipple or something like that? And then if it's tied directly into the water line, it's just going to flow water all night long. And until you come to the shop tomorrow and the whole floor is going to be flooded. So you'll still get a flood with a bucket, especially that size. But at least once this bucket is drained, that's it. And trust me, that's plenty of a mess to come to work and see in the morning having one full bucket in a flooded tub or a couple flooded tubs. So it's kind of the best of both worlds because I still have the bucket system and I still get to use the gravity system with it, but I don't ever have to stand there with a hose in it and fill the lines up. So let's go ahead and take a look at how we breed rodents. First off, we'll start right here. This is the, this is the feed. We use Missouri and we use the Ambigo food. And mainly we just use two because I like having uh, two avenue, avenues of getting food where if one person doesn't have any or they're short at least i already have another option to get food they're both equal quality i like the missouri just as much as i like the ambigo feed and we just kind of roll with both and try to keep both of them in, in stock and mix but one other cool thing about our our rodent building is we haven't used the air conditioner in years um if you take a look back here so if you look down this back aisle right here um this whole ceiling has these intake vents cut in it and we have two intake vents for every fan on the other side and once the fans really get going you just feel a ton of airflow coming through these things and really gets it like a wind tunnel in here and if you take a look down this hallway we have a series of fans on the ceiling so these fans are all on thermostats and whenever it gets hot the fans will start kicking on so since i said we had the intake vents on one side we have the the fans on the other side, once these fans kick on, it really gets to be like a wind tunnel in here. And it's a lot of fresh air coming in this side. It's going out this side. I've got the giant fans on the floor. I've got fans on the ceiling. So as that fresh air comes in on this side, it's all getting churned up like this and mixes the air up and then it goes right out. If there's enough airflow in here, you don't need an air conditioner. Um, two times since I bred rodents, I relied on one air conditioner and the air conditioner went bad on a really hot day and it just got stupid hot in here. Um, we lost some rodents and stuff and it's it's almost catastrophic even trying to have multiple air conditioners. Um, we've had a big one and a little one before and the big one broke and then the little one wasn't enough to keep up and we just didn't weigh that in as the backup. So this kind of eliminates that because now I have uh, seven fans total that are on three different breakers. So short of the power going out for the entire um, property, I'm never gonna have everything break at one time. And I've had these fans burn out. 
I'll have one out of seven burnout and it's no big deal at all. Nothing changes, it gives me plenty of time to go ahead and get a new fan and swap that out. And I really just can't emphasize enough that they don't need an air conditioner as long as you have ample airflow in here. You gotta have that airflow though. So let's take a look at how we actually breed rodents though. All right, we'll start here. This is where it starts basically. So this is our holding tubs. This is where we put our weanlings until they get up to size to either be used as feeders or we'll pick out some females. And this is cool because um, it's got four nipples in the back. You can see the holes where the nipples come through. It's got the feeder trough here instead of above. So it's good for the little wean rats and it lets them still be able to eat no matter how big they are or how little. But the only thing is you gotta really watch closing it to make sure that the nipples don't tuck on the back. Other than that, the, it's a really cool design. We always take a flashlight here and make sure the nipples lined up and nothing's leaking. So, I'll follow up on that in a minute, but we take, once we sex them out, they start at the very end. So we breed all our stuff in a, a circular motion, and that's how we keep uh, from the rats from ever getting too old, and that's how we keep track with it. So for example, this right here is the beginning. And we have uh, two more of the Freedom Breeder metal racks coming to replace this section of wood. Now to be the last bit of wood gone. These things work great. I've used them for years. This whole building used to be wood. The only reason we replaced the wood to go to the metal is I needed more rodents and I could fit twice as many tubs in this building um, in the same space if I go with the metal ones instead of these wooden ones. So for example, where I have these 5, 10, 15, 20, 25 tubs of the mortar tubs, I'm going to be able to fit uh, 48 of these big tubs from Breeder Breeder in the same spot and breed the same size groups. But back to how we do it with the cycle, the beginning here is our oldest rats. So we always put a tag on the tub when we set the groups up. So this group was set up 12, 9, 22. So we know that's when that tub and every tub behind it was set up until we hit another another tag. So then we'll roll through, he'll, we'll always call maybe like this one rack. These are our oldest racks. We'll call that one rack and have five, five tubs to be cleaning with. So we'll clean those tubs out, then we'll start moving tubs, moving rodents over. So as these are clean, we take this and move it over, and uh, then we'll have this rack empty. So then we keep going here, and then this one goes to this rack, and it goes a progression around the entire room. So we roll down this way, and then we go into this section. And all of our rodents spread like this. We do harm breeding, we don't pull pregnants. So we have a male, we have multiple moms in here nursing different generations. We got some little fuzzies, we got some pinkies in here. Um, like I said, multiple moms, one male. just pulled the other day and wean. So here's a pile of pinkies back here. And you can see all the moms will go back there and nurse. And we just gotta make sure that we pull the wean rats um, before they get too big to kind of like outcompete the pinkies. So as long as we stay on top of pulling weans, I really like this method of breeding. We do a 1.6 in these tubs and I think it's better than doing the whole deal where you have one crowded tub with multiple males and lots of females because that kind of puts you really on a, a very strict schedule uh, when I did it. Like every few days I knew I had to I had to clean out the tubs that had nursing moms to make space so that I could pull new pregnants and set those up. If I ever got behind, I ended up having uh, moms drop pinkies in the big breeding tub and they would get trampled. And this really like takes a lot of that pressure off. We just come in here, we clean the circle. As soon as we're done, we start back at the beginning and clean the circle. I don't know anybody that's gone to the shows and seen us. They've met Ed, Ed Majors. He, he pretty much runs our rodent facility for us. He's in here almost 40 hours a week, just cleaning in a circle. And uh, he does a great job keeping this place really running smooth for us. So once we get here, we come down to this, all the way down to the beginning. Let's fast forward back down here. Same size tubs, same groups, uh, but these are a little bit younger now. 
Lots of fuzzies, crawlers, pinkies. So then we'll keep progressing, keep progressing. Let's see. All right, then we got these ones. We use the magnets on the ARS. So now this is 2-8, February 8th. So everything below this is gonna be February 8th. February 8th, still February 8th. Now we have February 20 right here. So as you can tell, when we start cleaning, we'll cull a big section of the older ones to free up space. And then we'll clean like that. And I'll get to the whole point of that when we get to the end. Let's see here. There's a clip tag. We're at 324 now. So all these are 324, 324. Now we got the April 1st. So all of these are April 1st, April 1st. Now we're at April 22nd. And as you can see, they keep getting younger and younger and younger. So like I said, we'll call a section at the beginning of our oldest rats, and then we'll go through and start cleaning. So by the time we make it to the end, say we called 15 tubs at the very beginning. So the whole time that we're cleaning, we've got these 15 tubs that we keep cleaning and moving, moving all the, the moving the dirty tub rats into the clean tubs, and then keep progressing down the cycle. So eventually we get to this rat, which is the smaller tubs. We'll set the groups up, same group. We'll do like a 1.7 in this little tub. We'll put like the mediums in it. We're not expecting these to breed. I don't think there would be enough space to breed that size colony in this tub, but it works out because then we'll have 15 empty tubs at the beginning. So I'll go down there to that holding rat that's got all my weans racing up to smalls. I'll pick a 1.7 group of smalls or small mediums and I'll walk down here to my empty tubs you can see these 610 this is where we finished yesterday so all these groups down here at the bottom they were set up on 610 so that keeps where we can always have an idea of how old our rodents are and it keeps us ever from letting the rodents get too old and as long as we call in small sections like that every week when we clean or every time we get through the cycle it keeps it where we're constantly culling a little bit and we're constantly setting a little bit up at the, at the end that's fresh so there's always a balance of strong breeders, strong breeders, and progressively they get younger and younger to where maybe sometimes these have never even had a litter yet. The majority of these never had a litter yet, but we always have them raising up. So as soon as we call, we move these into the tubs and they're ready to breed and it keeps our uh, rodents always flowing at a consistent pace. So right here we have mice. Here's how we have our mice. And we have African softwares in these racks. Um, same system on the mice. We have the tags up here at the top. This is 315, so they're not even really that old. Um, three months, I feel like six is where we feel like it's our max when we start calling stuff. But I try to always be in a, a cycle where I'm calling stuff because I have so many fresh females that haven't bred. So I have so many brand new females that have never set up to breed that are ready to go into a tub and breed for me that I'm going to have to call, you know, two or three rows here to make space for those young girls. It keeps everything young, everything fresh. Um, I've constantly got a good supply of rodents. And these, we do the same thing, the harem breeding. And I feel like they do a great job in here. Like I said, we just finished pulling, so let me see if we got one with some pinkies. Something right here with some little hoppers. And you can see we do a 1.6 group. They'll all kind of communally nurse. There's something right here, some little small hoppers, some crawlers. There's a little pinkies down there. Lots of little pinkies. And it's multiple generations. Here's a pregnant girl. Here's another pregnant girl. As um, long as we keep these groups together, they'll live their entire life together and they're gonna do just great raising each other's babies. Now, another thing that I can show you that we do here on these rodents is how we set the bedding up. So, I don't know if you've noticed, there's a little bit of pellets in here. I'm gonna kind of move it to the side so you can see. We mix a little bit of pellets in at the bottom and then put our, our flakes on top of it. And I really, I don't like doing the pellets by themselves but I like having some pellets in the bottom of my flakes because when we go to dump the tubs and clean them, it keeps everything really dry. 
Uh, it never really gets like a wet spot where they pee in the corner or something when we're using the pellets. The pellets will start to expand and turn to dust. Um, so that's the downside of them. With all these fans and the pellets constantly breaking down, it really keeps a dusty environment that we have to stay on top of cleaning. But when we go to dump tubs and scrape them, they're already dry. We dump the bedding super easy and uh, then we can wash the tubs out. It's not a ton of scraping and stuff like that to get stuck wet bedding where they peed in. So I really like the pellets and I'd advise that. So here we have the African soft burrs. Um, again, we do the same thing with those. We do 1.3 groups in these tubs. And uh, again, they do fine having multiple generations in here. I always like having the softers for a backup. If you ever get one of those picky feeders, um, usually I can get them to take a softer. And I know a lot of people say that they get stuck on them, but I don't really ever have that issue. Usually I use them as a tool to get a, a snake that's gone off feed back on feed. And then I can slide a rat in the next time, or maybe I can put a softer and a little crawler rat in at the same time and it'll smell the software and it'll eat the rat and then I'll take the software out. Um, wild pythons can be very stubborn animals so I like the majority of rats when I feed my animals but I'm not afraid to feed them a mouse or a software if they don't want to eat that week just to get another meal in them and hopefully get them back on rats. Now also we have the lab tubs over here for reptile basics. I like these tubs a lot better for raising up like our hopper mice and our hopper African softers. Um, I feel like with the water bottles, the mice and stuff just seem to do better than with those spring-loaded nipples. I feel like they have a little bit of trouble with that. So um, that's just how we do it. Now, again, I know you saw all these lines. Every tub we have that's tied into this water system. So I'm gonna go ahead and shut it down for the night now that we're done. And I'll show you as easy as it is. All we do is one flick of the ball valve and the water line's totally cut off for the night. So knock on wood, it doesn't happen. But if we did get a chew tonight or a leaky, a leaky nozzle, um, it's gonna drain one bucket and that's it. And the water's not gonna keep going. So then when we come in in the morning, I'll flick this, this water valve on and it'll refill all the buckets from the night before. So one more thing that we've done here, as you can see along the walls right here, we have this, uh, aluminum sheet metal on all the walls. So anytime a rodent hits the floor, it'll run right to the ground. It'll usually go behind the rack. And we have this hallway all empty so we can walk through it. And there's rat traps along the whole ground. So if the rat does hit the ground, it'll normally run right underneath of the rack. And it'll run right to the wall and it'll run along the wall where we have all the rat traps. And you can almost immediately hear a rat trap snap. And then it's super easy to just walk behind the rack, walk down the hallway, and then get the rat out of the trap and then put it in the trash can. It's usually already dead by the time you get there from the trap smacking it. So that's one thing I've learned from experience. My old rat building uh, didn't used to have the racks away from the wall. And it was always a hassle because the rodents could climb up the wall and onto the rack. So having that aluminum like that along the wall, they can never climb up the wall um, pretty much they're stuck running along the perimeter of the wall. And even if it doesn't get in the trap, um, we'll walk right behind there and usually be able to get it with the hemostats pretty quickly. Um, I don't like a loose rodent ever. If one does hit the floor, we drop everything and get it. And having the rocks away from the wall like that, it makes it a lot easier to deal with. So that's another tip that I could probably give you. I, that's something that I learned the hard way. That's pretty much how we breed the rodents and I'll probably miss something going through it. So if you have any questions or anything, um, don't hesitate to ask. I feel like this water system that we're doing, that's something that a lot of people can implement on how they breed rats. And it's gonna save you tons of time. I know I never liked standing there with the water hose just watching a bucket fill, especially on repeat over and over and over and over going down the line on all these rats. So that was a very, uh, mindless job that we we're super happy to have automated and never have to stand there holding the hose again well i appreciate y'all watching i'm gonna go ahead and get out of here and uh until the next one